Ah, Aotearoa, New Zealand. I first came to New Zealand many, many years ago, and I sailed a racing series off Pakatawa Island in Flying Dutchman's. I don't know if you know what a Flying Dutchman is. It's about 19 feet six long. It's an Olympic class boat, and they are sheer magic. And we sailed from on the mainland across with this fantastic spinnaker run across Haraki Gulf to Pakatawa Island. I don't know where we finished. About seventh, I think. Benny Lexon won. And, uh, and we came back and we visited the boatyard, as I've been told tonight by Mike Austin, I forgot his name, of Jim Mackay. He built the New Zealand Flying Dutchman's. They were incredibly beautiful boats. Three skins of timber. Five mil each skin, shaved back, cross, cross, fore and aft and spiled and tapered fore and aft. Absolutely beautiful. The skiff that our little family owns now, built by Stumpy Keir and absolutely impeded by me, um, uh, is built in exactly the same way. It's a lovely connection to New Zealand. And then we've been to Awaroa uh, and enjoyed our time there with Ath, uh, Ian Athfield, and great people from here. And then for the last week, with Julie Stout and David Mitchell, Karen and I have been travelling the East Cape. Well... I'd always felt, ah, oh, the east side of New Zealand, relatively protected, facing out to the Pacific. A lot calmer. I knew what the west coast was like. But I was absolutely wrong. The east coast is a really tough place. And incredibly beautiful. And we found the first places where the Maoris landed so many years ago. Big, long, shallow beaches, fine for canoes, absolutely lousy for Pakeha, cargo boats. The white people had to build big jetties out there in order to try and service that area. And the jetties fell down and rusted out and so forth. It's a beautiful, wonderful, tough landscape. And I've always felt that landscape is the maker of people first and foremost. First comes the land, always. After that comes the artefacts. Even in terms of language, it's the, the chapter in St. John, I think it's the beginning, and I'm not Christian myself, but I know it says that in the beginning was the word. I don't believe that. I think that in the beginning was the song. The song is the cry of the heart. And land and song go together to make great culture and great people. And even if we think about the great cities of the world, you look first to the landscape. If you look to Copenhagen, which means trading harbour, you discover that it actually started on a place they called Old Beach. It's where they pulled their boats up. That's where they did their trading. That's where the city began. If you look at London, you'll find a crossing point in the Thames, which was the place to cross. That's where London Bridge is. Paris, you look to that and you see the Ile de la Cité in the middle of the Seine, the island which was defendable. That's where the city began. Everything else follows the land. And so we, I think, as a society, given everything that's happened in the world over the last 150 to 200 years in the Industrial Revolution, have made one incredible mess of it. Some of our things have been fantastic. I mean, one is stirred sometimes by the engineering power of the beautiful wall of a dam. But you have to look also at what has happened underneath those water surfaces to a whole series of other systems. Everything is connected to everything else. And I believe that as architects, we must understand all of those connections. It's not just about the making of a building. It's about how it fits to things, how it in turn is housed, 
housing. It's a verb, housing. It's not about just places where people live. Housing, the Danes refer to every building as a house. They say, oh, that's a very nice house over there. And you look and it's a factory they're looking at. But what it's doing is it's housing and industry. It's fitting and industry. If it's a courthouse, then it is housing the courts where the laws of the land are interpreted. If it's the parliament house, it's the housing of the place where the laws are made. It is all about housing. All architecture is about housing. And as such, it's about fitting. And fitting means that it, it makes this structure around the life. It's not about style, for me anyway, and I don't want to be didactic about this. It's not about style for, for me and a lot of our friends. It's about, it's about, it's about making the opportunities around life. It's that simple. The Scandinavian word for house is hus, H-U-S. That means husk. It's the husk around the almond. And the life within is the nut itself. And if you look at this amazing building of John Scott's, well, we've had some interesting discussions this afternoon about, about the uh, Pacific influences, about all manner of things which are really quite incredible. But you know, in architectural terms, I look at it slightly differently. What I see is a very powerful square wall. I see crumpled above that a roof, geometrically beautiful, of course, but it allows the light to come in. And I see equinoxial, the western sun, which has been giving us such trouble here this afternoon. I see the western sun coming in here on the diagonal, and in a few weeks' time it will be very powerful and it shines on a mighty granite stone with the bone of Pierre Charnel inside. That is an architectural idea of incredible power. That's what begins the architecture. If it doesn't have that, it is mere building. But if it has that strength of idea, then I think it is on its way.